It's Friday, everyone. How you doing? What are you guys doing for the weekend? Are you going to get out there and ride that motorcycle, man? Put a couple hundred miles on it and stuff like that. It's supposed to be freezing here, man. It sucks, man. Northern Illinois, we really don't get any good weather until, I don't know, end of May and stuff. Uh, other than that, it's a roller coaster here in Illinois, and it kind of sucks. I'm kind of jealous of you people down in freaking down south and the southwest and stuff. And then you'll come back and say, well, get the hell out of Northern Illinois. Tell that to China Dow, man. Today, we're going to be talking about, uh, from my perception and from the way things used to be, 1% uh, club reputations, man. My God, have they taken a hit lately? And a big question is, when your club starts out with cops in it or law enforcement, whatever you may be, and then you decide to go 1%. Uh, what does that do to your reputation? I've also heard a lot of 1% clubs freaking uh, taking in clubs like Iron Order that everybody bashes. So again, what does that do to your reputation? But first, don't forget to pound rock on. And also, man, immediately after this segment, go over to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. And China Dow will be joining me, man. Also, rocking with Hollywood at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm also playing uh, some reruns over on the YouTube channel, seeing how that goes and stuff. That way, in case you guys uh, that are on YouTube don't hit the radio station for that show, you can see some of the whacked out stuff that we talk about on that show. Especially when China Dow uh, is uh, co-hosting that one. Most of the time, it's just me, but uh, you'll hear my... Uh, uh, demented thoughts really if you want to donate you can uh, super chat go over and get some uh, proud hooligan uh, merchandise man show that you're a proud hooligan and stuff like that but Fridays I usually take a break from all the cases and I kind of give uh, some points of view of how things were a little earlier in the scene compared to they are now. And people are liking this kind of format. Again, uh, I do some biker news as well. I haven't been hitting it real hard. i got to get back to that because that's what I'm known for. Uh, but I, I'm going to be doing a lot more of that on the MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. Uh, but I ain't taking away from YouTube, guys. Don't worry about that. I, I just think there's a lot more out there in the scene to explore and to debate. And, you know, yeah, it gets people in the know. But at the same time, you know, there's other stuff. What can I say, man? Anyway, uh, oh yeah, by the way, you troll. I think his name is Dave or something. Every time we do a freaking video about the cases going on, going and if you don't like the channel, why are you even on it? At some point, we're just going to say, you know what, screw you. We're not going to sit there and take ignorant ass remarks or questions or any of that stuff because it does make you look ignorant. It makes you look like, yeah, we know you're either a law enforcement supporter. By the way, how's that going for you guys, uh, law enforcement? I guess Minneapolis is up in freaking flames right now. Maybe people are waking up and realizing just how bad things get when the cops go a little overboard. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. I talk about that plenty on uh, the radio. Yes, it's WMMRDB. We got 24-7 music over there, except when I'm on there Monday through Friday. But uh, rock and roll, man. Everywhere from uh, 80s to present, we play. And we don't play the same songs over and over and over again. Screw that, man. We play it, and we play it loud. Uh, but anyway, Anyway, this is a very interesting subject, and I have to say that because I guess even at my age, I'm learning a whole different bunch of things. I'm learning that clubs are taking in law enforcement a lot more. Some majors are really taking in freaking cops and I couldn't believe that one when I heard it and I was like no way and yeah way and then you have all these people that bang on iron order while well, they're a cop club they're this they're that 
then why are some of these clubs taking them in? Why are they flipping entire chapters of either Iron for Order, I guess Kinfolk has been flipped. I, you know what? I really got to keep up on all this stuff, don't I, man? Instead of just doing the biker news, I really got to keep up with this. But it is a weird type of uh, hypocrisy, if you will, that they would reach into clubs that only years before they were banging on for what they were doing. And what's even weirder is a lot of these clubs are taken to the internet and taken out of Iron Order's playbook when they first started of how to recruit. Yes, this is something else, man. And that's, you know, people got upset when I said, you know, some people are just watering down that diamond and, you know, then you have people, oh, you ain't a diamond, don't talk about it. Really? You have these people watering down the diamond and we're not supposed to talk about it? Like, everybody knows what the hell's going on now. Uh, it, it, you know what? The, a lot of these things pop up all across the internet. Uh, which, hey, man, it's more entertainment value. And that's exactly what this is, is entertainment, by the way. This ain't supposed to be gospel. The only way you're going to learn anything like I uh, drill and drill and drill is to go up to an MC and actually hang around them. Now, you can get all the history lessons you want from channels like mine or others, or you can get protocol advice from this person or that person, they're on the East Coast or they're on the West Coast. It still doesn't mean jack shit until you get out there. But my amazement really has been in this subject where clubs, they start out as, say, a freaking rocket club or they start out as a mom and pop and they have known cops in there. Known cops. And they go decades with cops. And next thing you know, they're one percenters that are Looking for respect? How do you give respect to that when the very thing that they're wearing has no association with cops, but they start their club out with cops? You see where the hypocrisy is in that, man? It is really interesting how that plays out and how people come to accept that. But only a few years ago, they're banging on this club or banging on that club for being a cop club. It's ludicrous, if you ask me. Now, reputation is everything. And let's admit it. A lot of the majors run on reputation of what happened in the past. Sh crap, it gets them in trouble with law enforcement because they don't understand that everything's changed. It ain't like that no more. But they use the reputation to get them. So, how is your reputation within the scene if people know that you had cops in your club, your club started with cops, and then all of a sudden you make the switch? It's like, it's like whiplash. It's like, what happened? As China Dollar would say. What happened here? I didn't think that was even possible. And then the cheerleaders that you see online with some of these clubs is like, do you actually really know what the hell you are supporting? Do you actually know the people that came or went into those clubs from other clubs that you supposedly cannot stand? See, that's the problem with people that just want to get their opinions out there. They want to feel good making comments and like they're the know-it-alls. But at the same time, you know that they don't know dick what they're talking about. So yeah, 
there are many, 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 many now. And it's no wonder everybody is dropping that 1% diamond now because it has been watered down by these little clubs or internet clubs that boast all these kinds of numbers. They boast all kinds of numbers. But it was recruited on the internet and you might have had maybe a 90-day prospect period or a hang-around period, whatever the hell they're doing. You know, the diamonds, the ones that I consider diamonds anyway, the older ones that started off decades ago, because they put the work in, they had to deal with all the profiling, they had to deal with law enforcement. The ones, those are the ones I consider diamonds. Usually, it takes years for them to patch another chapter or charter. It ain't 90 days, I can tell you that. And there's uniformity within their club. And what you see sometimes with these other clubs that just pop out and have law enforcement in them is, you know, some have sports bikes, some have cruiser bikes, uh, some have Harley, some have uh, Japanese, which, okay, what you ride is what you ride, but some, you know, most of the time there's uniformity. Most of the time with the diamonds, you got American-made bikes. But now you're seeing the pop-ups and stuff come up where they'll throw a diamond on and they're riding sports bikes or they're riding, you know, all different types of makes and models of bikes. That's usually not how it works. You know, again, this is coming from a 90s, early 2000s perspective. Everything's changed. I get it. I get told that all the time. But that's just, it didn't work like that back then. And you feel like if some of the people that actually gave up their lives, I'm meaning maybe they got killed or they're doing hefty freaking prison sentences for the club. And then one day after doing that long prison sentence, they come out and I guarantee it's going to be culture shock to them. It's going to be culture shock because they went in, it was one way of thinking, and now it's a whole different one. Could you imagine if you were a diamond club and next thing you know, ex-law enforcement or law enforcement's in that club. And I know there's a lot of people that are going to come back and say, and that was a famous thing that uh, Iron Order used to talk about was, well, at least we know who our cops are. Wait a second, man. What kind of answer is that? I'm taken back by an answer like that. Because here you are, you're supposed to be 100% hardcore outlaw, an outlaw motorcycle club, but you have the very people around you that we're not supposed to be getting along with. You got a line, man. It's never supposed to be crossed. Do I blame some of it on the lack of membership? It is hard to get people involved in clubs now. You know, I guarantee you if you walk up to a club and you ask them and they're going to say, yeah, it's hard to get uh, people involved. Why is that? Well, you got propaganda that hurts. But the other thing is it's not the same thinking uh, with the different generations anymore. My generation really thinks different than the younger ones. The younger ones... They want to kumbaya. They all want to get along. They all should get along with everybody. When, if they understood the scene, the history, they know something like that is impossible. One organization I support, not 100%, 1,000%. 1,000%. Is NCOM. And now I know the naysayers are going to come back with their bull crap saying, well, that's just 1% clubs uh, running roughshod over everybody trying to make money. You know what I suggest? 
I suggest you take your ass to an NCOM convention and see everything that goes on. Hear everything, because it's public. If you got the balls, I say get your ass over there and learn. Don't go around and just spewing and puking up the same stuff that you hear people saying all the time that have no association with them. You know, it's always been a funny thing to me when uh, some people talk about protocol that don't even know what NCOM is. Now, it used to be NCOC, you know, the National Confederation of Clubs. Now it's the National Coalition of Motorcyclists. And one of the reasons why I support them 1,000% is you get to see all the old-timers that have been around this scene. You get to see these guys from all different types of clubs coming together to fight something that affects us all. Here they are laying it out for everyone, trying to protect everyone, their rights and stuff, and you get these BS idiots out there that say, well, they're nothing but this and that, and this is what they're doing, this is the scam they're up to. There is no scam with NCOM. There is some really old graybeards in there that will knock your head off with some edumacation, man. Me, when I get in front of a graybeard, I like to sit down and I just like to shut up. And I, want, I like my brain to be like a sponge around them. The way they talk. Because, you know what, I relate to the way they're talking. I don't relate to a lot of new school stuff, man. But I love sitting there, hearing the stories of how this started, how that started. What would have happened then compared to what would have happened now? There's so much to learn out there. And you can learn it from the guys at NCOM that are out there fighting for your rights. But when you hear people that are now giving advice out there, not knowing about them, it's like uh, you just missed the biggest part of club history there's ever been by not knowing who they are. And why are you not learning about them? See, that's something I believe I learn every day, man. Like I said, you go in front of a gray beard, it's like, damn, man. They just told me what's up. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff I actually love, though. You know, many people don't want to take the time for that. And you can see from NCOM the reputation of the many old one percenter clubs in there. And you can see why they got that reputation. You know, there was a great, great, great man. J.R. Reed. He was a national with the Sons of Silence. And what that man tried to do and what that man started is just flabbergasting because at the time he tried to do it, everybody was going after each other. But this little dude said, you know what, let's try to do this, let's try to work things out, let's bring stuff to the table. And that was the National Confederation of Clubs who started it, was JR. And if you ever met a Sons of Silence member, you would know you're sitting with somebody old school. That's the same with the invaders, old school. Many people don't know who they are, but they're old school. Then you got people like the outsiders on the West Coast. You got the Midwest, the AOA. There's a lot of people with them clubs that can really teach you what everything's about. They're the hardcore diamonds, and they're the ones at the forefront of fighting for your rights. So when you hear people on the internet commented about NCOM, yeah, you're damn right, I get freaking pissed. Because, you know what, the biggest honor I have to say that I've ever got was when I received that plaque behind me from NCOM. That right there is like winning 
the Pulitzer Prize for me because it came from a bunch of men who know this lifestyle who had to endure all that they had to endure so you guys can enjoy what you got now it wasn't always cool to be a biker and them guys lived through that kind of stuff so that was the biggest honor for me was receiving that award. And I know Black Dragon was tickled to death to be noticed. And I think that's one of my biggest deals is to make sure I can support them all I can from an entertainment perspective. I think that's why I took a turn towards cases. Because one night I want to just kick myself in the balls. Saying, okay, you're covering all these stories. But if you really wanted to do what you wanted to do with both sides of the stories, you have to follow them through. So that's why I started talking about the cases, my opinions is because there needed to be more attention to the after effects. Just like the Vagos. We just did one on them. How they stuck together was unbelievable, man. To me, that showed everything that one percenters are all about. It ain't these new jack one percenters. It ain't one percenter clubs that started out with cops. No. It's them old school clubs, man. The Boggles stuck together. They were arm in arm. And they took on the federal government. The federal government. Then, well, in 1979, you had the Hells Angels, the first club that was Ricoed. They stuck together. And that's the thing that first comes to mind when you talk about a one percenter club is sticking together. Every organization is going to have somebody who rats. It's just human, that's human freaking experience stuff right there, man. It's just a fact. But at the same time, when you see a bunch of guys that say, you know what, screw that, man. We're standing up for what we believe in. It's just an amazing feeling to be able to cover something like that because you do have a lot of naysayers. You have naysayers all the time about clubs. God knows I get them all the freaking time. See, what you guys don't understand is the emails that I get. And I'm sure Black Dragon gets all the emails too. You know, the troll freaking idiots. We get some pretty messed up stuff. And when I am able to cover a story like that, it's beautiful. It's like shoving it right back into their faces. So, you know, reputation, you know, I think is everything. Whether you're in a street gang, whether you're even in the Moose Riders, or... You know, the it, it don't matter. Reputation is everything. Depending on what culture you're in. Now, in the club culture, for the older guys at least, it's not acceptable to start a 1% club that has a bunch of cops in it or flip a club that everybody is supposed to hate. They're flipping chapters of Iron Order like it ain't like it's water. I think people are actually using Iron Order as the stepping stone into the club scene, even though people say they hate them. Okay, if you hate them so much, why are you taking their people from them? See where I'm coming from with this uh, being hypocritical crap? It just blows the guy's mind. But if you really want to learn something about the scene, yeah, you can listen to those blowhards. That's what we are. It's nothing but blowhards, man. 
you got to understand when I talk about entertainment, that's what it is. This is Insane Throttle is a business, and I'm going to use my business as an example. Yeah, we do cover this and we cover that, but just like any radio show, you're not supposed to take it at 100% face value. You're supposed to go out there and explore. Hopefully a program like this gives you a kick in the ass to get on the street and say, you know what, Hollywood said I should learn more about NCOM. Hollywood said I should go and attend one of their conventions to disprove that all I'm hearing about them is false. That's what I'm hoping people do. I believe this year's NCOM is in Iowa. I'm not for sure, but I'll get that uh, more information later on as it comes closer. But please do, man. If you got any set of balls whatsoever and you get off the internet and go out there, I promise you that you're going to have your eyes opened up to a whole different world. It's not going to be over an internet line. You're going to meet people you never thought you would meet and learn from so many graybeards, man. Especially Vietnam generation graybeards. Those are the ones you want to talk to. They will tell you straight up about this scene. You know, I consider myself an old man, but I'm not. I'm only 48 years old, man. I don't know that much. I learn every day. Then there's younger guys giving it. No! Get your asses over there and talk to them gray beards, man. Vietnam ones. Ones that's going to kick you in the ass, not play with you. And tell you the way things should be. They're going to teach you about life. They're going to teach you why it's not okay for a club that started out with cops or that recruited Iron Order is not a good deal for a 1% club or the lifestyle and it's just going to water you down. I'm just asking, man. I'm hoping that you guys take... You want some advice? That's my advice. Like I said, on Fridays, I come at this from my generation's way of thinking. It's something totally different than what would be happening now. Come on, we're talking 25 years ago? A lot's changed, man. Trust me on that. Because you didn't have cops in your clubs back then, and there was none of this, well, at least we know who they are. How do you even go that route? Ooh, um, it's like skin crawling here, man. It's like, damn, man, you got crabs or something. That's just weird. But it's an acceptable type of deal now. But then those same people have the nuts to go around talking crap about one percenters, uh, patch police stuff. You know what? I believe in tradition 100%. Even though some of it needs to be updated, uh, depending on the areas, I don't know, man. You hear the horror stories, and it's like, well, you know, you can hear the horror stories, but I really couldn't believe something like that would happen with clubs. But, hey, it's a new deal. I'm a 100% believer if you start up a club, you're supposed to go to the dominant in your area. It's just respect, and plus, you get involved with everybody, man. The parties, the rides. Ain't that what the clubs are supposed to be all about? It's not about starting a club up, putting a patch on your back, and then go sit in your backyard. Go do that shit right, man. And I know I'm going to have a bunch of people out there saying, well, this and that and this and that, the Constitution. Okay, do what the hell you want to do. I'm just telling you how it would be better. 
Just my thoughts. What do you guys think, man? Let me know in the description box about this subject, man. Uh, answer the question. Uh, do uh, a club's reputation uh, start taking a hit when they're accepting uh, cops or law enforcement, whatever you want to say it, or they start with them? Let me know, man. Put it in the comment section. And don't forget, man, we're going to the second half of the show right now. So uh, I'll meet you over there with China Dow. Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't get the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happened. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic, nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal.